House prices could fall 20% after speculative fever? What the heck is this guy talking about? Stay tuned to find out on this week's episode of Prime Prop Studio. Promise you, it'll be worth it. Good day, Toronto. Welcome to this week's Tuesday reaction of these headlines of what the heck is going on in this real estate market. Oh my goodness, the last four weeks have been crazy entertaining from reading a headline perspective. So first one here we got, home prices could sink 20% when speculative fever breaks. Okay, all right, let's break this down. Do I agree? Yes, to an extent, but we got in. Have to read between the lines of what these people are talking about because where this kind of snippet came from was the new head of OFSI. So the OFSI is the Office of Superintendent and Financial Institutions. Really boring name, by the way. Um, these are the guys who came up with uh, the stress test, right? So they regulate the banks and the mortgage qualifications and everything. So they do affect the demand side of the real estate market. So this new guy, Peter Rutledge, came out and he had a podcast. And this little 20% fall is a snippet from the podcast. And I did listen to the podcast. So this is not to throw shades at Peter. I actually think he has a pretty decent grasp of what's going on. But you need to get more context as to where this snippet come from, right? So the snippet is that you could see a fall of 10 to 20% in the Toronto or in the market, right? You have to remember where he's referencing. As a person who is kind of managing all of Canada finances and the uh, lending rules, it's not necessarily specific to just GTA because, you know, if you're watching this, you're likely in the GTA, right? Um, he said that it could be 10 to 20 and it just depends on the market situation. Let me, so let me explain to you. If you have areas that have doubled in price almost, kind of like your Bancroft and Tilsonburgs, I think those are more at risk to a price correction of 10 to 20 percent than your kind of GTA areas or Vancouver areas because those have a little bit more fundamentals behind them. So while you read this, if you're kind of in the market, you're hoping that you'll have a 20 percent correction. I don't think you should hold your breath. I'm going to explain that in a little bit later on this video. Um, but he says that Canada has emerged as one of the frothiest markets for the last 12 years, which is correct, right? And we've kind of have new records high. But he's just concerned that if the interest rates do go up, which he says right here, that will bring an end to the speculative fever. And again, speculative fever has to be read between the lines. The speculation, like I was saying, comes from the, you know, excerpts of the 905, at least in GTA, right? So I'm not saying about Vancouver. So I was saying really like Bancroft, the Tilsenbergs. These are, I think, your uh, Owen Sounds and Perry Sound. So a lot of those prices have actually gone up 60 to 80 percent since the pandemic. And that's because people want to work from home. They bought a cottage and those prices have gone up. So even if you're in like the GTA area where prices are up um, in the like 26 percent last year, I think that's not what he's referencing. Or at least that's what I don't think he's referencing because the demand side is still very, very strong right now for us to see a 10 or 20% correction. But a 10, 20% correction in the excerpts of the 905, I think is more likely. Kind of similar to in 2017, when there is kind of a policy change or something happens towards the end, it will affect those who have seen the most speculativeness, right? So the foreign buyer tax obviously affected the 905 the most. And you have to remember how that happened was we saw like as Toronto, we saw what happened in Vancouver when they implemented the tax and they're like, oh man, the prices came down quite a lot. <laughs> so when that was coming into Ontario, we already knew what the effects would be from watching Vancouver. So a lot of sellers were like, oh, got to sell right now. A lot of inventory. A lot of buyers were like, oh, I better wait. So that was a complete 180 sentiment change. When we talk about pricing correction from interest rate, that won't be so instant like that. It's going to be more gradual because they have to build these interest rates and and normally these interest rates go up like, you know, 25 basis points or 0.25%. We could maybe see a 50. People are talking about it. I don't think so. But we're not going to see like a massive policy correction like we did uh, that will affect the market and make it drop in 10, 20%. It's going to be gradual, right? So again, anyone who's hoping for it, don't hold your breath. Now, he goes on to talk about that. Even if there's a 20% correction, we can absorb that volatility. And he is correct in that sense. And let me tell you why. Just looking at the GTA area, in 2021, prices went up 26.6%. If it goes up 26.6% and we go down 20%, and let's just assume overnight, you're still above if you bought in 2021 most of the time, right? At the start of 2021. And uh, more about this in next th Thursday's kind of episode, the market watch that came up for January, prices were up 7.3% in a month. So 26.6 plus 73.3, I'm not going to do the math, but like 33%. So what does a 20% correction do? Bring you back to like August, May of 2021, 
right? And I'm not saying like, you know, this is normal. This is totally not normal. I'm just trying to give you some perspective onto kind of like the absorbing of this volatility, right? So that's why if you're going to buy in the core where the fundamentals are and, you know, the cities, I think you're better holding there. And what the, could see a correction, and if there is a domino to fall, it will be the excerpts. These are kind of like your cottage towns, right? Your Peterborough is really far out, or like in cottage like Horthus Lakes, or you know, really up north in like Muskoka. Those are the ones you really got to watch out for, right? Because those prices went up like way more than fifty percent in each of the little counties in the last like eighteen months or so. So you got to watch out. Now, when I talk about where prices are going to go. I've been explaining this chart to a lot of my clients and don't be startled. It's a lot of colors. I added them in, but this is a chart, uh, courtesy of Ben, uh, ben from Edge Analytics. It kind of explains to you how prices change on a month to month basis, depending on the months of inventory that's available, right? So I've always used months of inventory as a way to see as an in the leading indicator of where prices are going to be. And let me explain that to you. So a month of inventory is a stat in which that says, if it's one month of inventory, meaning that if zero listings come out between now and whenever, it will take one whole month for the demand side to absorb it all, to buy it all, to have nothing to buy. So if you have three months of inventory, it takes three months to buy everything if nothing comes up, right? Obviously stuff comes out, but this is just that metric. So generally when you're sub three months of inventory, it's a seller's market, meaning prices go up. If you're above six, generally it's a buyer's market, so prices come down. If you're somewhere between four and six, generally it's what we call a balanced market. And that's actually the best market. And in this chart, you can see over here that anything that's above the purple line, you are basically seeing a price appreciation every single month when adjusted. So you can see if every month went up 0.5%, it's one of these blue dots. If it went up 1%, it's one of these dots on this line. And you can basically see anything that went under where the price changed, right? So a crash, a correction, whatever you want to call it. For prices to change and go down from what they were from the previous month, you need to go below the purple line. And what you'll notice here is that in this little yellow box quadrant I highlighted here, there's no blue dots below the purple line unless they are to the right of the blue line. or sorry, uh, the green line. And the green line is months of inventory. And that number is five. So for us to see a price reduction, we need to see at least five months of inventory. You understand? Which means that in 2021, when we plot the charts over here, you can see they're so far to the left and so far high up because we saw less than one or two months of inventory last year and prices went up two to 3% as every single month. And when you analyze that, that's how you get 26% year over year, right? And with the numbers that came up for January, 2022, they are literally off the chart. So if I were to plot where Jan the end of January 2022 went, it's literally off the chart. So you can see we had half a month of inventory. So I'd be like right here coming straight up that line and the right off the screen. And the prices are 7.43%, give or take, that went up increase. Which means that the, the y-axis is so far off to the left that you can't even see it on the chart. Literally off the chart. That's how crazy it is right now. I am at the point where I think it's definitely crazier than 2017, right? Granted, some people are still looking at properties right now, but I'm showing you this because for us to have prices come down, right? Go below zero, this purple line, we need to be in five months of inventory in this little quadrant here, which tells me that we need either to get, to get from 0 0.5 months of inventory to five months of inventory, we have to 10 X the supply. I don't think that's happening. Or we 10 X reduce the demand. And what interest rate does, it slowly tapers demand, but it does so at a very slow rate. So if you go from 0.5% interest to, you know, 0.75, right? It's not going to like cause you to have five months of inventory. Another one to like 0.75, probably not. And then to one, maybe, maybe. And I said this before, I think we need to see variable rates at 3% pre pandemic before we see any change or even stagnation in kind of the price acceleration, right? So that we can start seeing deacceleration and then we're seeing reversal in price. And right now the mortgage rate is like 1.5. So we need to see at least six rate hikes. And like I said, we're somewhere between three, two to three, maybe four. And then we'll probably see that baked into the price for the correction. And it's gonna be a really long time before we see that because I think something else in the market will break before the real estate market. And these are all kind of like short-term, long-term trends I'm trying to explain to you so that you understand. And I go into more of that detail in the last podcast I have been from Edge, uh, Edge, uh, Edge Analytics, and that's where I got this chart from. 
So if you kind of understand this chart, you'll see why um, if there is going to be a correction based on what Peter is saying, it will probably be the suburban market or exurban markets of the 905 before we see the main core. And we'll probably get a sense of kind of how quickly these interest rates are coming and when the sentiment changes for buyers. So when we talk about interest rate, it's going to be more of a, like a linear kind of decrease in sentiment and people going to buy. So it won't be like a snap of a finger where, you know, you think it's a 10 or 20 percent price correction, like what a policy change can do. Like we saw the um, non -re non resident speculative tax, right? So the foreign buyer tax. And while I say that, you do have to understand there are policy changes, I think, that are scheduled in the upcoming few months. But between now and, say, April or May, those few months, there's no interest rate coming, maybe March, maybe um, and then policy changes maybe aren't coming until much later in the spring. So prices can probably go buck wild between now and then. Right? And this is why I'm saying like, yeah, I would not be surprised if we see another five to 8% increase. Cause in 2017, we saw a 26% increase in January all the way to April 1st. Yeah, it was bonkers. It was absolutely bonkers. If this is the type of content you enjoy, help us spread knowledge by smashing the like button and subscribing to the Prime Proxy channel because every week we put out content on Tuesdays and Thursdays so that you can get educated and so that we can be transparent and honest and share our data with you in terms of like what's happening in the real estate market. So we do this because we want to be transparent and honest because we want that when you're ready to buy your property, whether it's like your first home, you're upgrading to another home, buying an investment property or selling your home, you'd be like, ah, Zen. Him and his team know what they're talking about, so you can book a call with me yes, using the link right here on the bottom of the screen, www.chatwithzen.com. Now, back to the next article. So now that we're fully understanding how quickly something can change in terms of pricing, I'm going to show you another crazy thing that happened on the pre-con space. So Urban Nation does a lot of tracking for pre-construction, new builds, and basically now numbers came in for 2021 and it's just record high like crazy so in 2021 they sold about 31,000 pre-construction units that is the second highest only behind 2017 and you can see that it says 77 percent year-over-year growth in quarter four in quarter four that's how much demand the pre-construction space saw that means a lot of people were taking money out and piling into real estate and the reason why there's so much stuff to buy is because builders generally they're holding on a project for five to ten years right and they're not going to sell it when the market is bad. So when the market is bad, like during the pandemic, nothing got released. But when the market sentiment where like interest rates are low, people want to go buy FOMO, whatever, they uh, sell because they're more likely to get more buyers at a higher rate because people are kind of speculating into the pre-construction space, right? So right now it says that they exceeded their 10-year average by 43% in that quarter. Holy smokes. And the uh, pricing for unsold condos right now, meaning existing inventory that hasn't been bought, is at $1,322 price per foot in Toronto. Increase of 18% annually. That's absolutely bonkers. That's just absolutely bonkers, right? And this chart here, it shows you that this is 2021. We're at 30,844 units. And 2017, when it was like crazy, crazy for pre-con space, it was about 31,000. So we were still selling pre-cons at that space. And like, oh my goodness, we were selling for like, 900 to a thousand dollars a foot in the downtown core right now we're like 15 16 and the demand has kind of just ramped up because there's nothing to buy in the resale space right so when people are understanding this whole inflation thing they just borrow from their house because it's gone up 26 percent right last year uh, when interest rates are solo and they just buy pre-con they can carry the cost of borrowing a little bit lower um, sorry cost of borrowing at a lower mortgage rate right so that's why there's so much demand for pre-construction it makes total sense and you can see here this chart that it kind of talks about the pricing of where it went. So when we were doing pre-con, we are kind of right about the thousand point here in 2017. And then this little spike here was February 2018, when the city of Toronto just doubled development charges overnight, which caused the prices to go from, I think, $1,000 to about like $1,200 a foot in the downtown core. And that's kind of when it stopped making sense for me. Uh, but you can see that prices still continue gradually going up. The was the, you know, pandemic pricing for labor and material shortage, and then it continues rising. And it's not that like, again, I don't defend anybody, but like when I understand the business uh, kind of performance of these builders, they have to make a margin of like 10 to 15 percent. So if they're not making 10 to 15 percent, then they're not going to build the project and it gets canceled and we have less inventory. But when the prices keep going up and the development charges go up, and I talked about this before, the end user like us, you and I who buy the pre-con are the ones that absorb it. So when you're at $1,300 a foot, uh, you're way higher than the, what the resale is, right? And it's kind of speculative. And that's why I tell a lot of people, you got to watch out for when you're buying pre-con because 
in on the off chance that condo prices don't get to where they will be when you close on it and you underappraise, you have to pay the difference, right? And I saw some of that in 2017 with pre-construction homes, right? Like in the 905 because prices came down. You just got to watch out for that when you're buying, right? And that's kind of why I backed off pre-con for the last little bit. Now you got the last article here. I'm looping this in and you'll see why it kind of real estate related. It says that Canadian unemployment plummets in January with Omicron spread, right? So we lost 200,000 jobs, that's 200,000 jobs last month. And it says here that the unemployment rate rose from 6% to 6.5%. The reason I'm putting this here important is Bank of Canada generally has two mandates, right? You got uh, make sure inflation is good, right? So it's not going too high, which I think they're failing right now, but you know, transitory. And the second one is make sure the employment is good. And I know they throw in climate change soon, right? And the reason I'm bringing this up is is this another excuse for Bank of Canada not to increase interest rates in March 2nd? Hmm? Right? Because if they're going to not see uh, favorable numbers for unemployment in February when these numbers get released, are they going to have another reason to not increase interest rate? And when you don't increase interest rate, then people are like, wow, why is Bank of Canada not increasing interest rate? Even though, like I said, they should. And then prices go buck wild again. Right? So this is how it relates to real estate. Because everyone's looking at the interest rates as a leading indicator of whether they can clamp down the demand. And if they keep delaying the interest rate increase because of pandemic, Omicron spread, job or inflation, real estate prices are going to continue going up. It's financial repression when cost of borrowing on a mortgage is lower than infl inflation. Assets like real estate go whoop, right up to the other end of the top right corner of the chart. That's basically what it comes down to. So if you understand that, then you'll understand why I kind of looped this in. Now, I still don't think they're going to use this as an excuse. Like, let's say February numbers come reasonable, then they're obviously going to increase in March. But if they don't, oh, that's kind of an interesting take. We'll find out, right? But hopefully they do increase interest rate. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, reaction video on Tuesday. Um, on Thursday, I have the market watch on to break down all the numbers and kind of show you what the heck just happened in January because it was absolutely bonkers. So make sure you stay tuned and subscribe for that. And if you're looking for help in the real estate market to navigate and grasp all the things I kind of just showed you, because it's a lot of data and I understand, you can book a call with me or my team using the link right here. It's www.childzen.com. Until next time, your move, your future. See ya. Now that you're done watching this one, how about this one? Oh, you know what? This one's good too. Ooh, this one's really good. You know what? Just watch them both.